kind of a lot of information, but this is how we're gonna wire gauges. It's not as scary as it looks or sounds or seems. This is a video that I think a lot of you will find helpful. At least I hope so. I had a customer bring me this gauge package. They got off, I think off Amazon or online. It's a Faria Chesapeake is the line of gauges. So that's just the model. White face with a chrome bezel, super sharp gauges. And Faria is a great name. They tend to work for a long time. So we have a fuel gauge, we have a voltmeter, we have a speedometer. This one is driven by a unit that will be mounted on the back of the pontoon. So it's a pressure that pushes the needle. Let's back up for a second. There is a GPS model of mile per hour uh, or speedometer available in the same line of gauges. And then the tachometer. This customer is installing these gauges on a pontoon that has a Yamaha for an outboard. So I was able to refer to a chart. I'll try to post a picture of that chart somewhere in this video or at the end so you can screenshot it. But basically it shows you all the colored wires that correspond to different outboards. In this case, we're gonna start from where the gauge harness would hook up and then we'll work our way to what I did on the gauges. So I started with just gauges, keep in mind, and made my own harness. So always on any motor, we're gonna have a black ground. That's gonna tie into the key switch or into the gauge harness. That will be the black ground coming from there. Yellow is our key on power for a Yamaha. For other outboards, different colors are gonna correspond differently. I know like a Mercury or Johnson Avenue, key on power is typically purple or should be. And then we have green, which is our tax signal. A lot of times a tax signal, for instance, on Johnson Avenue or Mercury is gray. So keep that in mind, it's different for every outboard. This is for a Yamaha. And then we have a fuel sending wire and ground. This is just a two in one 16 gauge that he can run uh, wires back to the fuel tank and tap in here for the fuel gauge. So we have our ground power and tack. Let's chase these and where they go on this gauge setup. He's gonna just hardwire them straight into the dash. So everything comes from that harness. Essentially, we're running to the tachometer. So my key on power comes into my battery or my positive. That has a little blue jumper that's just gonna power the light bulb in the gauge. So if you ever see a blue jumper wire, typically just for the light uh, to backlight the gauge. So a positive post here, key on power. When I turn the key, this is gonna get power to this gauge and that's gonna jump over to all my other gauges. So my speedometer, positive is gonna jump over to backlight it, jumps over to my voltmeter, and then that jumps over to my fuel gauge. So we have to tie our power in everywhere and typically we're just gonna piggyback it in. These gauges are going a couple different places in the dash, so it's a little bit different than yours might be if you just have a straight row of gauges. I did have to add some extra wire here. If we look, our middle post coming from our gauge harness up, we're gonna run, the wire runs around behind, but it runs to a ground post in the center of our tachometer. From there, we jump our ground to our speedometer and then our ground jumps over to our volt piggybacks to our fuel gauge because on your fuel gauge you have power ground then our sending unit from the tank so you're going to have to ground through the key switch and ground through the sender uh, sending unit of the tank so keep that in mind there will be two grounds on your fuel tank one positive never touch your power to the sending unit it's a s for sending wire we want to keep those always separate or you can damage the gauge then we have our green wire comes in to our signal for our tachometer. That's where it's gonna end, it's just a one and done. So we powered our gauge with our key on power, have a ground so it can be powered, and tack wire. For this type of speedometer, it's just a positive and black because this is literally a manually driven speedometer. If you had a GPS model, you would have a positive and a ground and that would be it just to power your GPS and then you would have to jump to backlight. So you'd have a blue jumper wire to backlight your speedometer. Voltmeter, pretty straightforward here. We have key on power coming in to the positive post and then that's gonna jump a blue wire to backlight our gauge. So this is a light bulb down in here. 
that backlights the gauge. And then our ground wire is jumped, piggybacked over to our ground post, which piggybacks over to the fuel gauge that I just mentioned, has our ground positive sending wire. And this blue wire just jumps over to power the light. Your light bulbs, in most cases, are gonna be grounded already. So you can't see it here, but the light bulb has a ground that just connects in the gauge to our ground post. So all I have to do is supply it power. Kind of a lot of information, but this is how we're gonna wire gauges. It's not as scary as it looks or sounds or seems. We just have to supply them power, sending or signal, and then from there, it's however you want to jump your wires around to share power and grounds and how you're going to backlight. One last thing I'll mention, on our tachometer, you have to look for your engine and your year and your cylinders and everything. There is a pole setting, this little arrow, you turn it with a screwdriver. There's numbers one through six. There's a chart online on Faria's website that will tell you what pole setting your gauge needs to be depending on your outboard because this gauge can work with just about any outboard any brand but we have to change the pull setting to get it to read correctly for the tachometer that's it hope this helped comment subscribe always helps us out thanks guys